Everybody talks about choosing the right music and the right sound effects for making the best creative video. But no one ever talks about music stems. Now if you're wondering what I mean, let me explain. Now this video is sponsored by, no I'm just kidding, I wish it was. But I am going to refer to Epidemic Sound and Soundstripe. And they have in no way sponsored this video. I do have an affiliate link with Epidemic Sound and Soundstripe, like anyone that subscribes to them. So if you want to subscribe to any one of them, the links are down below. Now a song that you download of Epidemic Sound or Soundstripe is just a plain MP4, start to finish. As if you were standing in front of a live band and you heard them play it. That's pretty much what a song is. However, the stems of a song, imagine recording just the singer separately and just the drummer separately and just the bass guitarist separately. That is the stems. Now, although it's not every single instrument that is separate, it has been split into four different categories, especially when you look at epidemic sound, which is melody, bass, drums, and instruments. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's too much work, I don't need it. You're probably wrong. Every single videographer or creator that's worked with music understands this. Let's say you're a wedding videographer. You listen to a song, the intro is perfect. The first verse is perfect, even the chorus. But the second verse talks about a breakup. And you're like, I can't use this in a wedding video for a client. You don't even know if they broke up before. Maybe there was a serious breakup and this is gonna bring back terrible memories. Or you're creating an epic video, a travel video, it doesn't matter what it is. There's a certain instrument that just you don't like. It gets to a point and it just keeps going on and on. This is where stems comes into play. Now we're gonna go over into Final Cut and I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. Now don't worry if you're working in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, whatever editing program that you are working in that has multiple layers for audio, you can use stems. Firstly, I'm gonna show you how to download the music. It's pretty simple. So this is Epidemic Sound. When you head over to the download button over here, you're gonna see download full mix or download all stems. You're gonna to wanna to click download all stems. Now when you click download all stems, it'll also download the full mix as well. Now you're gonna to wanna to drag that zipped folder into your folder or however you like to categorize your music. I like to put it in the project that I'm working on. You double click on it, it'll extract it. You can delete the zipped file. And in this folder, you're gonna see the four different stems as well as the full track. Now to kick it off, we're gonna start off with an easy one, which is more wedding related, where I'm gonna remove just the voice to explain to you how to do it, and then we're gonna show you how to make an epic beat. Here we go. So this specific song has got three different stems and not four. Now once you've pulled it into your timeline, it's gonna put it in a straight line like this, at least that's the way I do it. Because these stems are exactly all the same length, you can actually just drag it to the head or the start of your timeline and they'll be in order. So if we listen back to the song. You get the picture. Now if I listen to, let's say for instance here where the melody comes in and the bass. Now what I'm gonna do, just to kind of give you the idea, I'm gonna hit V on a Mac in Final Cut Pro. It's gonna mute that track. I'm gonna mute the instruments. Listen to this. Pretty simple. Now the problem that I have with this track is the opening words. It doesn't sound right. I don't know what it means, but there's a smile upon your face. This is a wedding song, and the guy doesn't know what it means when there's a smile upon her face. Surely you should know by the time that you're married. Anyway, I just don't like it. So I'm gonna skip the whole first verse and we're gonna find where the chorus starts. I'm just gonna expand my timeline a bit. And I'm gonna listen out here. I see something shimmering. Now, just so you know, the melody in this specific track actually contains the singing. And you said you put down your morning guns. Would you follow me to wonder? Now, that's a great part to start. Would you follow me to wonder? So, you're getting married, would you follow me to wonder? So, this is pretty simple. What you're gonna do on a Mac is you're gonna hit the R button and then from there where it says, Would you from there back, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag 
and then when I take the volume of that clip, I can shrink it down. Now for a Mac, it's automatically gonna give me a bit of a volume fade, if you will. So I can actually drag that along, bring it further back, so that when I listen back to this, all of that voice is gone, and I can just play it out. Would you follow me to Perfect. So in a case like this, this would be ideal for the bride's coming up to the chapel, she hasn't walked down yet, maybe the bridesmaids are coming down first, and that's when the audio starts. It gives every video a lot of impact when you customize your tracks. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it with a song that's a little bit more upbeat, a little bit cooler, and something that you can use from a more creative side. Now this specific track, has got four stems. So this is ideally how it normally looks. I'm gonna drag them on my timeline. Now, listen to this track. I love the build up. The only part that I actually don't like and gets a little bit annoying is this radio mechanical voice that just doesn't stop in the beginning. There's too much of it. But the melody also contains a slightly separate part. I'm gonna mute the other tracks quickly and show you exactly what the melody consists of, the voice. It won't always just be the voice, so listen to this. Now some of those sounds are great. Yeah, comes that. Here's the build up. So now we know exactly what happens after the build up. So without, you know, dropping audio and cutting it right now, what I'm going to do is just listen to that build up quickly and then I'm going to drop the melody down and I'm going to bring the melody up again by hitting V and listen to what it does. So here we go. How sick is that? Now, before we actually get into dropping all these levels and you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing, I'm gonna just select different tracks and this is how I play around with tracks. And I'm gonna hit the V button on different tracks just to temporary disable so I can hear what it would sound like. So I'm just gonna go through and uh, let's say, for instance, the instruments. Let's say we wanna, no, let's say we wanna drop out the drums, which is quite an excessive part of the song. So listen to this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop out three tracks and we're just gonna leave the drums in place. So I'm gonna temporarily select by using command and select those three tracks. And I'm gonna play the drop again, let it run and hit V and drop out the others so we just hear the drums. Now you get the picture. So what I'm gonna do quickly, and I'm gonna speed ramp this so you guys can actually watch kind of what I'm doing. I'm gonna adjust this to something I would like, and then we can listen back to it. And you kind of get the idea of how annoying the song could be. And maybe not annoying, to, I mean, it's a great song and it's a great track, but the problem is if you're listening to an edit that's got some impact motion, you know, some hectic transitions that you wanna add some whoosh sounds or different sound effects, maybe a coffee grind or whatever it may be, you don't wanna have all of that audio drowned out your sound effects. So, I'm gonna customize this quick and then we're gonna play it back. So I'm gonna cut in over here quickly and explain to you something. This is a little bit more of an advanced level. It's not really difficult. All you have to do is kind of have some form of music or beat background and just kind of, you know, if you can tap your foot to a beat and hear when a song is wrong, if the beat accidentally changes, you can do this. This chorus is now lasting too long and I know in an edit like mine where I like things fast and I like the music to change a lot, I'd like to end this off a lot quicker. So if you look at this piece from here to here, it's way too long for me to get to this cool sound. I'd like that to come a lot sooner. So now I'm gonna show you what to do. Basically, you gotta look at the main beat. Generally, the bass line has the main beat and you can kind of gauge from there as well as the drums. That's the only way that you're really gonna get change. So I wanna bring this to here. Pretty simple. If you look at this piece over here where it dips down and goes up, it's very similar to this piece over here. 
and it actually lines up with the next bass beat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my blade tool, I'm going to hold shift and make a complete slice over there. Then I'm going to head all the way back over here and I'm actually going to cut past that point. I'm not going to cut at the exact point and I'm going to show you why now. You actually want them to overlap. So I'm going to take this whole middle piece, delete it out and I'm going to zoom in. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to select these four, I'm going to go over and try and line them up as close as I can to a beat. So I'm going to pick a high point, I'm going to put my play needle on, I'm going to zoom in. Now my top four tracks are selected and I'm just going to line them up like that. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the ends, I'm going to bring them closer and I'm going to create a fade on each side. So we're going to bring this one down, we're going to bring this one a little more, this one can go quite a bit more and all you got to do is kind of you know gauge with the top track and the beat below. So when I bring this one down I look at the one below which matches from the previous cut um, and that's kind of how I gauge exactly where it's going to be. So you just want to line them up so that you can transition them. As you can see this last track on the melody it has a very similar rise but then it kind of has a second one. So these these aren't the same. So if I mute these and I mute these and we listen to it you can hear those two are totally different. So I'm going to take out the bottom one and I'm just going to fade this just a bit. Now I'm going to listen to it. Right, sounds much better but I'm going to bring it back a little bit more because you can hear there's definitely another instrument over there and I'm going to fade it in a little bit longer so it changes that sound and it brings it in. Perfect. I'm going to unmute these. Now listen to this. Right, so now that the track is done, I've actually chopped it up a little bit and made actual cuts. Cutting it up and shortening the track is okay, but when you actually physically cut out a beat rather than muting it, I wouldn't do that because you're going to have a lot of trouble lining it up if you want to bring that beat back a little bit later. So unless you really know the song and you really know what you're doing and you're happy with it, especially sometimes you know you're busy with an edit and you want to go back and you want to change it. Now the biggest problem that you're going to face when you do something like this, especially when you work on a magnetic timeline, and your audio shifts with the clips that you add in Final Cut is that these are going to move as soon as you add audio into the magnetic timeline or you shift something around. So what you can do is you can select it all and you right click and you say new compound clip. So once you're happy with your track and you can give it a name, my music edit, it makes it one clip. Now if you do want to go back and you want to change it you can actually just double click on it and it will bring it up in an editing format and you can play around with it again if you want to fix something. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you with a short little edit with this audio. But first, please smash that like button and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this. I really enjoy making these videos and this type of content for creators. So we've got a whole bunch more planned for you guys, including a whole gimbal series. So sit back and enjoy the next 30 odd seconds of a custom track. Here we go.